from the Ron Miller Race Car Studio, this is the Hammer Down Racing Report. And now your hosts, Scott Hammer and Ron Miller. Welcome, race fans, to the Hammer Down Racing Report for September 12th. Hundred? It is show number 100. I forgot. Did you bring pizza, Dusty? No. Oh, no. <laughs> we forget to pass that memo on. Oh, man. No, I was too busy uh, scrambling around for our... Oh, look, and now the camera's not working. I'm invisible. It looks like an empty chair if you're uh, watching us on Facebook Live. Oh, darn. <laughs> There's an empty chair for when I'm talking. Uh, so, yeah, see that up there? That's uh, that's what I well, Where do you go? I'm invisible, apparently. No, how, how can that be? I don't know. I, the camera must have locked up. The right? miracles of modern and radio. I was, I was just going to say, we had the engineers working uh, for like a couple hours. On well, the, if I talk, and, Scott, then, then, then you're on. So, yeah. I mean, it's like the back of you, but people know you're here yeah i'm here except for when i'm talking and it's just gonna be invisible uh those of you listening on uh regular podcasts such you probably wonder what the heck we're talking about the uh the double camera there's an empty seat that is awesome i like it i am invisible (laughs) okay uh so anyways uh yeah this is show number 100 yeah triple digits scott you'd you'd think by uh 100 we'd have things figured out i'm gonna try something you going to reboot it? Yeah, I'm just going to actually do the power. Power back on. Tell them where to go, Dusty. You can't see. There we go. Did I get it? Yeah, you got it. All right. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a rough start there. Welcome to uh, the Hammer Down Racing Report for, uh, what I already said this, September 12th. So, getting late in the season. Show it, number 100. It is. Hopefully things will work better now. Scott, it doesn't feel like we've been enjoying a hundred of these shows. Is that what we've been doing? This has been enjoyment? Yeah, you you should see what I do for punishment. Oh, my goodness. Uh, coming at you live, hopefully on YouTube. Uh, Twitter, Periscope, I know we're on there. Facebook, I know we're on there because I'm invisible. Or it was. I don't know if it's been fixed yet. We'll find out. Um Tonight on the show, late model racer Dusty Moore joining us uh, in the studio, in case you hadn't noticed. Hi, Dusty. Hey. Thanks for coming on in. Uh, Late model uh, racer picked up a pretty big win uh, a couple weeks ago at at Oakshade Raceway. You were a little excited. A really impressive win. Yeah. I'm still still invisible, apparently. Sorry, Scott. That's all right. (laughs) How can that happen? I don't. The cameras lock up, and it's a weird system. This is the prototype system. That they've improved on when they put it in the other studios. Uh, so see. maybe we should have moved to a different right, studio well. tonight. But anyways, uh, if you're looking for race cars, parts, safety equipment, service, looking to get your car put back together because you broke it, give Ron Miller Race Cars a call. Yeah. 734 856 7223. We're getting a little bit low on bomber tires. I need the guys to give me a call. Let me know if they're going to be needing anything. Uh, I, I don't want to put in a 30-tire order and uh, sell five of them. So if you're going to need tires for the end of the season, give us a call. And if you missed uh, the big update, uh, big announcement last week about the Hammerdown Racing Report Dirty 30, it has been rescheduled from uh, October 3rd. That's the original date. So it was going to be a Thursday night. It's been rescheduled to the following Saturday, actually the following Saturday after that Saturday, October 12th. Uh, that's Saturday, October 12th, exactly one month from tonight, as yeah, a matter of fact. Yeah, I can't take my eyes off that talking chair. That's amazing. is <laughs> <It's> great? <laughs> it's kinda... I'm sorry, if you're not watching on Facebook or YouTube, you, you don't understand what's going on. It's a on, creepy but... empty chair. We've got ghosts But it talks. Studio. It is uh, almost uh, Halloween, so yeah. Uh, the Dirty 30 coming up at Sandusky Speedway on October 12th. It's a Saturday now. Uh, gates open at 4, racing, or uh, gates open at 4. Three. Gates open at three, hot laps at four, autographs at five, racing at six. Right. So it's a little bit of an earlier start as uh, well. Just in case it could be a little bit cool. And uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the Dirty 30 yet, uh, we're going to be running uh, UMP dirt late model rules on the asphalt at Sandusky. There's not going to be dirt put down. It's just going to be running on the asphalt. Unless some the, of the guys get a little bit low in turds one and, and two. And throw the dirt up and, on and the track. And it could be some Yeah. The guys from Sandusky are not going to be putting dirt on the track. Right. The cars might, but that's a different story. Uh, we'll also have the Fremont trucks and the uh, bombers from Oakshade in a combined class. 
Uh, the bombers will have to be two barrels. If you got a four barrel like myself, you have to unhook the, uh, the back rear two seat. barrels. There you go. And you said something about uh, expect a large uh, truck count. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, one of the racers from from Fremont, uh, Noah Wagner, was in today, and he said that uh, by his count, he expects at least seventeen of the Fremont trucks there. So. So we need to step up the bomber. Now, you got to understand they've been pulling nearly thirty cars or thirty trucks, trucks uh, to that class. So uh, that seventeen might be a you know kind of a low count. Conservative? It, yeah, maybe. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, if you want to uh, get your name added to the list of possible drivers that are going to be showing up, you can head on over to the Hammerdown Racing Report website, which is HammerdownRacingReport.com. No, no, no. That's not possible drivers. We, we, it has to be real drivers who possibly might show up. That we, We've got enough possible drivers. Go to HammerdownRacingReport.com. Got a page set up on there. There's a link to uh, Sandusky's people where they got a form uh, filled out. No obligation if you fill out that form to... uh, No pre-entry. It doesn't cost you anything. They just kind of want to get an idea who's going to be there. We want to promote who's going to be there. We have all the names uh, listed on uh, the website. Uh, We were trying to talk Dusty, bringing uh, his late model in, but he's kind of running a a limited schedule. You could bring your show car. I don't have a show car. Oh, you got rid of that? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that's... uh... It may be somebody's uh, sportsman car. I'm not real sure. Where really? It okay. Yeah. Well, tell them you want it back for the weekend. <laughs> also, also at the uh, Dirty 30, there's going to be a front-wheel drive class, which will be the dirt guys versus asphalt guys. So, Big payout for that one, too, 800 Scott. to win for that, yeah. yeah. <coughs> payout nope. information, excuse me, is uh, on the, that page at hammerdownracereport.com as well. All the information you need is on there. Times. Everything. Everything. Chris Mize's phone number is on there. If you want to call him and say what's going on. We did announce last week that there will be a tire and fuel truck there. So should be a good And day. Harold's going to be doing uh, tech. Did yes. he confirm that? Okay. Yep. Great. So there you go. Uh, coming up a little later on tonight, Ryan Weekman back with his uh, weekend weather pit stop forecast. Not not many races uh, coming up this weekend, but uh, a lot more coming up the following weekend. We'll talk more about that later. How about we get to some uh, results from this past weekend? A lot of stuff happened this past weekend. Really? Yeah. It's a few things. Uh, A lot of news, too. A lot of of big news. Um, Oh, before we get to that, make sure to follow us on Twitter, at Hammer Report. Like us on uh, Facebook if you haven't. Follow us on there. And we're also available on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google. All those places. Listen to us on demand. Fremont Speedway was in action with the Attica Fremont Championship Series Championship Night. Great first season for A- for that series. AFCS Championship Night. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I, I, you really stretched that one out. I did. Well, at least I didn't put a sponsor name in front of it. The Ron Miller Race Cars Attica Fremont Championship Series Champion. See that? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't really a sponsor. I'm just that was an example. DJ Foos uh, had a two point lead over Buddy Kofoid entering uh, the final night in the 410 class. Uh, Foos went on to win the feature, and by default, the inaugural AFCS 410 championship. Buddy was third. I think he finished third. Yeah, and he did that last week, the week before yeah. too. He's got to stop finishing. He's at least he's got podium finishes. Um, John Ivy. Earned uh, his 60th career feature win in the 305 feature, and uh, Jamie Miller was able to uh, wrap up the 305 championship in the AFCS. I think just by starting is all he had to do. Sean Valeni picked up his seventh dirt truck feature win of the season Saturday night at uh, Fremont Speedway. Flat Rock was in action with their final event of the season, the Vault Antiques and Treasures Enduro 250, and that was uh, that was won by Ethan Stadnuch. The new check. There you go. <laughs> I was going to jump. I was, I was gonna We've ju- had him in the studio. And I, <laughs> I was going to jump in and help check. you, but you Thank did you. good. Ed Case uh, was the Enduro champion for the season. Dave Leoff was the winner of the Street Stock feature, and Flat Rock is uh, done for the season. Sad. Oak Jade Raceway was in action. Chris Keller won the uh, Bill Reckner Memorial Sportsman feature. He's been... He's been on a tear this year. He has. The late model and jumping into a sportsman, Joe Keebler's sportsman, and uh, winning that feature event. Terry Rush. The car looked amazingly like his own. It does, yeah. 67, yeah. 
And is, there, it, is there a reason for that? I think they run. Uh, it has the same CCR on it, okay. so I, I think they're they're cousins. You know. All right. Uh, Jeff uh, Terry Rushell got by Jeff Folks Jr. late uh, for another bomber A main uh, feature win. Cameron Tusing won the compact feature, and uh, Dylan Burt led the entire distance of the uh, bomber B feature. I don't know how that bomber A main looked from where you were sitting, Scott, but from where I was, that was a spectacular race. Those two the folks in uh, Russell have been putting on quite a show all year. Well, and then back through the field, they were two and three wide all over the track. Track has been uh, in pretty good condition yeah. the past, very racy the past few weeks yeah, at Oak Shade. I, 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 th- th- I thumbs up. I, if you could see me, my thumb is up. But it, here, you're seeing it there invisible. we go, Scott. I'll put my thumb up Thank for you. you. All right. I appreciate it. Um, Sandusky Speedway uh, was in action. Preston Walker won the modified feature with uh, Stephen Connect second. Connect. Uh, becoming the modified champion over there at Sandusky Speedway. Wayne Sweeney was the Lake Erie Stocks winner, and Carl Smith earned the track championship in that class. Dylan Watson Watson's, uh, was the uh, winner in the Renegade Stock feature. Brandon Holcomb was crowned the track champion there, and Colton Fowler was the uh, beginner stock feature winner and champion. So a lot of championships yeah. being settled, and some more this coming weekend will be settled. Um Butler Motor Speedway, we don't usually talk about them. They're kind of just outside our range, but uh, since we had Kevin Reeve on last week right. for the uh, John C. Reeve Memorial, I figured we'd go through the winners there, Max Stanbaugh. You think, does, does our Facebook feed go clear up to Butler? I don't know. It might be a little fuzzy once you get up to Butler there. <laughs> it's like right there in the fringe. I think we've got a lot of lot of listeners up there, Scott. Uh, Matt Swander says his vantage point was better for the uh, that bomber race. Oh, I'll bet it was. Yeah. <laughs> Jealous. Right there from the flag stand. Uh, Max Stambaugh won the uh, John C. Reeve Memorial Sprint feature at Butler on Saturday night. Daryl Banks was the modified winner. Tim Wilbur in the street stock. That name's very familiar. He's, oh, Tim's been around racing okay. for a long time. I thought so. Uh, Logan Easterday was the front-wheel drive winner there at Butler Motor Speedway. Aldora Speedway also in action this uh past weekend what people are asking why i'm invisible yes if you, again if you're just tuning in on facebook live for some reason my camera's frozen and i look like i'm just invisible i'm a ghost tonight so it's the empty chair talking it's you know cool. I, I heard a woman once tell you scott that she could see right through you and now the cameras That's are proving it uh world 100 action at eldora speedway this past weekend thursday night 61 year old billy moyer and Hudson O'Neill were both uh, winners, with Moyer announcing his pending retirement. And uh, yeah. Ron's, Ron's well familiar with the uh, reasons why he voiced on that. Uh, Friday night, And De- we're working on getting some direct feedback on that. Uh, Friday night, Dennis Herb Jr. and Jonathan Davenport were the winners, driving the uh, number 49 throwback to the movie Six Pack. Davenport won the 49th annual world 100 on saturday uh it was his third time winning uh, the world in the past five years that i was reading a thing that there was a bunch of numbers for each like a bunch of winners that had the same number of which really which uh world 100 it if, was so if won. you're in you're, so like, next year number like, 50 is going to win like if you're into numerology so is it ryan's year next year maybe you know, I, I wore that because last weekend he took his crew and uh, a couple of uh, bomber drivers uh, out on Sunday oh, and let them let them turn some laps, and I thought that was a really stand-up thing. So I thought he deserved a, a thumbs up <laughs> because the car uh, an honorable and the mention. car came back in one piece. It too. did. I, you know, I saw one guy got pretty sideways. One of his crew, I think it was. That was his car owner. Is that who it was? Yeah, he oh, looped, he looped, he looped, he looped it a couple times back there. It was <laughs> pre- I watched the video. It was pretty good. Well, if it's his car owner, then he, he can do whatever he, he wants. Yeah, if he wanted to run into the wall, he could. <laughs> uh, Brad Sweet was the winner in the World of Outlaw NAS Energy Drink Sprint Series Action Silver Dollar Speedway on uh, Friday over there in California, still on that West Coast swing. Uh, Darren Pittman held off Sweet and led all 30 laps on Saturday. Also at uh, Silver Dollar. Wednesday night, they were in action at uh, Placerville Speedway. Shane Gobelik, or it could be Gobelik, won for the second time in uh, World of Outlaw competition. Uh, it was his uh, first win since 2013. Ooh. So, a little bit of a dry spell, but I don't think he runs World of Outlaws regularly. When was your last win, Dusty? I don't know. I was trying to figure that out. I think it was Attica, maybe Four years ago, probably. All right. Somewhere around there, four or five years ago. It's been a little bit. 
15 or 16, 14, 15, 2000? Yeah, for, 2014, 2015. You ran yeah. a sprint car? No, I didn't run a sprint car, but that was my last win. <laughs> my wife won't let me run sprint cars, so oh. I tried. What? No. Have you ever gotten in a sprint car? I'm still married. Okay. <laughs> uh, coming up next for the uh, World of Outlaws, uh, tomorrow night uh, they're still in California at uh, Stockton Dirt Track. Uh, in uh, Stockton, California? No. Yeah, no, Cal- Calistoga. Oh, no, okay. that Calistoga Speedway Saturday. Stockton Dirt Track is tomorrow. Calistoga in California Saturday. And that will be the end of their West Coast swing. They okay. start heading back. I think the Kansas City or Kansas, uh, not Kansas City, Kansas, uh, some tracks coming back this way. So, uh, I'm going to outlet All Star Circuit of Champions. We're in action. Aaron Reitzel scored his 11th win of the season at Bedford Speedway last Thursday night after leading all 30 laps. Um, Washington's Trey Starks, who competes weekly at Iowa's Knoxville Raceway, traveled to Pennsylvania to win uh, at uh, Port Royal Speedway on Friday wow. night. That's a big deal against the Pennsylvania Posse. Yeah. Reitzel was back in uh, victory lane on Saturday at Port Royal. Winning I'll bet that was win number 12. The uh, 52,000 <laughs> uh, to win Tuscarora 50. You're good with the math. Uh, Dean Niddle Memorial at Atomic Speedway is uh, coming up uh, next for the All-Star Circuit of Champions. Actually, that's uh, uh, this weekend, tonight through Saturday. Atomic wow. Speedway. Where's the breaking news button? Uh, shoot, is, wait, is this it? There it is. Okay, fade. All right. Um, dirt Late Model, uh, big-time team owner, team sponsor, uh, Dunn Benson Ford. The Ford dealership has been sold. Uh, I don't know if that's going to mean the end of Dunn Benson Racing, but for sure the dealership has been sold, and I don't know that the new owner has any interest in continuing the program. But for sure Dunn Benson Ford hmm. is no more. Well, okay then. Yeah, that was breaking news, that Scott. Was Good job. Thank you. Well executed. Um, next direction, uh, they were at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, this past weekend, Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick collided and took each other out, all but handing the victory to Kyle Busch in the Xfinity Series Indiana 250. Uh, what was that, that Saturday? Um, their next race is the Rhino Truck Pro Outfitters 300 Las Vegas on Saturday at 7.30 on NBCSN. Uh, cup action, the Big Machine Vodka 400 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was won by Kevin Harvick. Bubba Wallace had a nice uh, third he did. place finish. He was excited about that. And someone can drive, he says. Yeah. Um, Ryan Newman knocked uh, Daniel Suarez out of the uh, final playoff spot uh, by finishing ahead of him. No, he didn't physically knock him out. No, he, he didn't. He just... Oh, that's right. Nobody can see me, so... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Good try, Scott. Uh-huh. Uh, next race uh, for the Cup Series also at uh, Las Vegas on Sunday. It's the South Point 400. Uh, that's at 7 o'clock on NBCSN. Some other uh, random notes here. 16-year-old Zeb Wise was the uh, last driver Brian Clausen uh, picked for his uh, driver development team before he passed away. Right. He was also the winner of the second annual Driven to Save Lives BC39, powered by NOS Energy Drinks on the dirt track at Indy on Thursday night. That's a long name, too, by the way. Yes, it is. But uh, pretty cool action there. That was uh, last Thursday. Uh, Also... Uh, IMS uh, President, Indianapolis Motor Speedway President, Doug Bowles stated that the temporary backstretch is no longer temporary, talking about the dirt track at uh, okay. IMS, indicating the dirt track is now a permanent fixture. All right. That's I it, cool. I didn't realize it wasn't permanent. I thought it was. but Well, I think it was really originally intended just to be a, a one, one-shot one deal. But Last year? Yeah. Well, now it's now it's going to be That's a, a good thing. Yeah. Well, and a lot of, a lot of racetracks are finding that there's gold in that dirt and did you notice how uh how sparsely populated the stands were Boy, at Indianapolis? I did. and, 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 and that it, was after the week after darlington where yeah, it was like wow where'd all these people darlington come from? was packed indy was terrible the night race at bristol was terrible uh go figure what can you do actually i thought bristol was all right not so much i don't remember uh, again, if you're just joining us on our Facebook Live, 
Then you notice the invisible chair. It's because I'm a ghost talk, tonight. It's, it's the talking chair. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the cameras, nothing wrong with your screen. It's just the way things are. Billy Moyer Sr., uh, we mentioned this earlier, he announced his retirement following the 2019 season after picking up career win 840 uh, on Thursday in uh, World 100 preliminary action. Mo Moyer had uh, retired back in 2015 as well. Right. And then came out of retirement. So right. these and I've noticed with you guys, you dirt late model guys, any racers announce retirement, that's always like, uh, well, that means I'm going to not race for a little while. Forever probably, isn't as long as it used to be. Something like that. Uh, Moyer went on to say, unless a fairy godmother story comes along and I'd be the driver in some way, uh, without having to do all the work and pay all the bills like I do in this deal. If that happens, I might continue on, but it's tough. I've done it a long time, and it's been good to me, unquote. He had some parting words to the powers that be at the sanctioning bodies, too. And Were let they happy it, words? No, 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 not at all. Uh, pretty much letting them, letting them know that they need to do something to reel in the costs, which amazingly we've talked about here on Hammer Down quite no, a we've bit. We've never talked about yeah, that. Yeah. I told you he was going to talk about it. Billy just <laughs> said that the, the costs are absolutely stupid uh, and that you can't even sustain on, on the purse money. And, and there's no way the purse money can go up. So he claims they need to do something. Otherwise, they're going to keep dropping teams off. So and it's up to the sanctioning body to, to do something. Absolutely. But there was no real sanctioning body at the uh, world, is there? Is that, does that UMP? Is it UMP? Yeah. Oh, it's UMP yeah, rules. Yeah, it's under UMP rules. Okay. So UMP has to do something. UMP is part of World of Outlaws. World Racing mm -hmm. Group. But and uh, Lucas but Oil. Maybe, and, and are UMP. they part of Lucas Oil? No, I thought no, Lucas no. Oil was separate. No, absolutely. They're, they're two so separate entities. They need to get together and come up maybe. Yeah, put their heads together and come up with a way to make it affordable the for, for the big guys to be able to afford to race. Uh, unless you've got a... Well, if the big guys can't afford it, how can the little guys afford it? Like Billy Are Moyers, you guys little guys? Like Billy Moyers yeah, I'm a said, little guy. <laughs> if, if you don't have a fairy godmother out there throwing money at you, um, ultimately you're going to go away. That, and that, those were his words. They were. Well said. Uh, World of Outlaws, Morton Buildings Late Models have released the dates of some of uh, their uh, 2020 marquee events. Uh, their season's going to kick off. Um, Pretty much the beginning of the year, January 2nd through the 5th, at the uh, newly constructed Vado Speedway in uh, New Mexico. Have you seen that place? It looks like a looks like Cedar Point or something. Really? Super nice looking, yeah. Um, uh, the 49th uh, Dirt Car Nationals at Volusia Speedway Park will be the uh, February 4th through the 15th. And if you want to see more of the events, uh, they have them at uh, their website, World of Outlaws, Wharton Building, Late Models. Uh, big news out of uh, NASCAR. I was excited about this one. Matt De Benedetto will replace Paul Menard. And you said De Benedetto, I man. Did. That's one can, of your favorite names it is. anymore. Or Matty D. Yeah. Go with Matty D. Uh, he's going to replace Paul Menard in the Wood Brothers 21 next year. Um, Menard has announced he's retiring after 12 seasons. I and I have a feeling that Ford Motor Company is going to have a big interest in that car next year. I know we were talking last night. You don't? Do you think? Uh, uh, Menards will be back as a sponsor? I there? certainly hope so. Menards has been a big part of a lot of forms of racing, and, and it would be a shame to see them uh, leave the sponsorship role on that car. Sam Driggers. I was talking to Sam Driggers uh, oh, he during just the night you won. Sam just checked in? No, that Matt was saying Sam was uh, in charge there at Eldora for the World. Yeah. So, so that was UMP. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Sam about trying to get uh, UMP um sanctioning for the dirty 30. Oh, okay. You talked to Sam? I did. And and uh he said we could probably have done that. They've done dirt or they've done asphalt tracks. Right. Uh but it's the night of their championship or it was cuz that was so before we switched it now to the 12th. Uh, the 12th, which is a Saturday, but it's after but, their but points. But it's after the points. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know that it really matter at that point. Right. Um we'll, we'll was, just have He was telling me there was this uh forget who it was, but somebody that ran, there was a few asphalt things, and he, I, I don't remember the story. There was no point to my story, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> we had talked to to, uh, to Sam a few years ago about doing a race at Toledo Speedway, and uh, the Toledo ha had shown a, a, a little bit of interest. Um, nothing ever came from it. 
but it, it'd be cool. Yeah. Um, the uh, playoffs uh, have the the playoff contenders have been set for the Cup Series. Um, should I run down those real quick? Sure. We'll start at the bottom. Sixteenth, Ryan Newman just getting in there. Clint Boyer as well. I think both those just got in on on points there at the, the last minute. Right. Uh, Eric Boyer Al- was kind of comfortable. Yeah. And because J- Jerry Cook is the car chief on that car, I pay a lot of attention to Is to he going to be up do. there contending? Yeah. Is yeah, this the absolutely. same format where they do a few races, then cut off the bottom four, yeah. do a few yep, more, cut off the bottom off. four? Yep. Okay. Uh, Eric Almarola, uh, William Byron, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson. Those are all 16th down through 11th. Now the next uh, 10 are the top 10 in points as they reset the points for this. Uh, Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch is up there. Now, Kyle Busch starts out with 2,045 points. Mm -hmm. Uh, The bottom... 2,000. 2,000. I think it's the bottom five or six. Clinton, Ryan, both uh, 2,000. Eric Alamarola and William Byron have 2,001. Oh, yeah, okay. So, then but, it goes up to 2004, five, a couple of them, with, actually three of them with five. That's weird. Anyways, so yeah. playoffs start uh, at Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah, this weekend. Okay, so there's your, there's your NASCAR news. Uh, Dusty Moore in the studio with us. We're going to talk to him now. And don't forget to stick around for our weekend weather pit stop with Ryan Weekman. That's coming up here momentarily for some season championship races in our area coming up. Um, first, let's uh, talk to Dusty. You were uh, you got the American Late Model Series win. Was it two weeks? Uh, a week ago, Saturday. Yeah, right? that's what it was. And you seemed a, a little excited. It's been a long time, man. I was, <laughs> I was, I was really the, excited. The I mean, victory donut was pretty cool. Yeah. Dusty. I, well, I practiced that because the week before, I think we got rained out or something, and one of my sponsors came over, and I was teaching him how to drive the car and. Um, he went out in my front yard and did a donut, and so <laughs> it was kind of neat. And then I had to, of course. So uh, you knew the car could do it. Yeah, I knew it could do it, and I of course had to one up him. So yeah, I I tell I, you, one upped him. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> no, it was impressive. Yeah. Now you've been uh, you've been running a limited schedule uh, as of late, right? Yeah. Um. Really, like last year, we were we were really talking about. Um, we missed the first two thirds of the season um we were thinking about selling out we we're kind of you know a car my show car is around we call it you know i sold that so basically the only thing we had left was a motor and some parts and uh, we got a call from rusty schlank and he said he had a car if we want to put it together so you know with his help and you know his guys and stuff we put a deal together there in the middle of the season and um i think i ran four or five races last year and um this year it's just hit or miss i mean i'm not some weeks i take off some weeks i race so it's uh it's been fun this way it's not a lot of work you know and well and and it has to feel good not feeling like you have to be there oh absolutely like our our number one goal was to miss like the second race of the year so we were out of the points contention (laughs) (laughs) because we knew if we got hooked up into the points we'd be like well we're we're, we're like 10 points back you know we got our um and you know with my kids in college and stuff you know i like to be able to go down and see them if i want to see them or if they come home for the weekend spend time with them so it's you know we're all getting we're not getting you any younger ron <laughs> and uh you yeah know, some of us refuse to get older though, <laughs> yeah, Dusty. so like you know all the help i had years ago most of them got family and uh you know it's hard to get guys to really schedule time to come in the shop and do you're, a lot of work. You're invisible too. I'm invisible. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're both invisible. <laughs> I'm so, still I think I'm still you're, here. You're the only one that's here, Ron. Yeah. Ron's well, still here. Everybody Austin. else is just a talking chair. Should we all sit by Ron? Talking chair. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna make any Yeah. But like um with the guys and stuff, it's a, it's a, it's hard on them too, especially if you tear something up, you know, you're working all week. So we kind of got a relaxed schedule this year. I like it. Yeah, well, how do you like to depend on Ornery Don? I mean, he's older than the hills. <laughs> well, I have Roger, you know, Rogers, yeah. <laughs> Roger and Don are right there along each other. <laughs> so how, how uh, 
How'd you get your start? In, how long you been racing? Let talk, let's go back to the beginning. How how did Dusty oh, Moore get started in racing? So, um, I tell everybody this story, and I think I'm pretty solid. I haven't veered away from it for a long time, but in 1993, um, the Ohio State High Patrol loved me. I was uh, buying them new cars and uniforms and all kinds of stuff, and I decided <laughs> there was a better option than to. Uh, Speed down the highway, so street racing wasn't. Yeah, getting. street racing wasn't. Yeah, and uh, so I got it with a real good friend of mine, Stacy Demeline, and you know we put our heads together and we were digging cars out of weeds that people had rode off, and you know one thing led to another. We I think we ran like four or five bomber races at Oakshade in nine in yeah ninety three, and we, we were like hooked after that. Man, we didn't know what to do. And what was your first car? I had a, it was a Chevelle frame with a Nova, a Chevy Nova body. It was a bomber car. Sure. Yeah, it was freaking awesome. That thing was great. Wish I still had it. How many years did you run uh, a bomber? I have five races. Oh, that was it? That was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I was, I dove in head first and then I, I went straight from uh, the next year. I was going to do sportsman's, but I got hooked up with another guy and uh, he talked me into doing modifieds and I traveled. You know, I spent 10, 15 years in a modified traveling all over. I was in Florida, Georgia, Tennessee. I mean, we loved the modifieds. They, were, they weren't that much money, and uh, we could still – they had a claimer rule back when we first started, so you could um, you could really, you know, put 1500 bucks in a motor and go out and be competitive. And if somebody thought you were cheating, they'd buy your motor off you for 500 bucks, And uh, you had to give it up or give up your points and your pay for the night, so – um, you know, that was a, a selling point for us, really, when we first got started. So Were those times better or worse than today? It, you know, it, it was just, I mean, there was always guys that um, played with the rules a little bit. But, I mean, um, you know, it got to the point where everybody was spending the money, so everybody stopped claiming. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, I, I know that. You know, that was, um, that was the downfall of that. So. I, I see that UMP just... Uh, clarified their rule for their b mods for next year uh i think there's only six numbers of afco shocks that the guys are allowed to run mm -hmm. for every car in in that class Yeah, so they basically have two or three shocks for the right front a couple for the left rear and the left front it's probably one number yeah yeah left left front has one yeah. number right rear has a number so uh, it gives straight them a four, couple of, straight four that's valve right. kind of when we started around that was the same premise because there was no, they were all steel body shocks. I mean, you had right. four or five shocks, and they were all a stock number. You couldn't take them apart. You couldn't rebuild them. You couldn't do anything. Well, and they've tried to do the same thing with today's modifieds, but creativity has sure gotten in the way. Well, yeah, there's some really, really good shocks out there that look like steel bodies that you can, you, me, you, and me could about 15 minutes take them apart and That's it. make them whatever we wanted to make them. <laughs> and they're not cheap. So when did you uh, make the switch to late models? So I was trying to figure that out, and I'm thinking it was 2005, maybe, 2004. Um, Chrissy, help us with this. Yeah, I'm not, I, I can't remember. <laughs> I was trying to think of that. And uh, Roger Markey, who I drove for for a long, long time, um, basically Butch Hobbling was driving for him. Um, Butch was ready to hang up his helmet, and he asked me if I'd come run his car a couple times, and... Uh, um, I, one thing led to another, and I mean, until last year, I drove for Roger. I mean, right? Yeah, Roger. Uh, he hung up his helmet. Um, he's you know he's getting up there, and you know his health is he well he wrecked an airplane, so he was in the hospital for a while and nursing home after that. So Rog basically said, you know, he's he's got to just uh, cut back, fellas. What we got is what we got, and if you want to run it, it's yours. So that's basically you know where we're where we're at today. So. And if uh, you're just, I, a lot of people have just joined us uh, recently on uh, Facebook Live. We're not, well, I'm invisible, and so is Dusty. So Dusty Moore here in the studio, uh, invisible, invisible Dusty Moore, and I am also invisible. Ron is the only one you can see. If the camera goes to a whole room shot, you get to see everybody, but, uh, oh, there, yeah, you're you're invisible, Scott. I, I know. So it, it's 
It's just oh, there it's, we got it's the, just going to be that way. Well, there we just got, pre- well, close we, your eyes and pretend you're listening to us on iHeartRadio. We could sit on Ron's knee or something if everybody wants to see us. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a group shot. Yeah, Come on over, yeah. guys. That's, I don't want to get that close to you, Ron. No, no I no took thanks. a shower. It's okay. Have you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any plans to uh, to maybe uh, maybe after the kids uh, get out of college and done with that and on their own to maybe go back full time racing or I mean what's uh, what's the future look like for Dustin? You know, Moore? if I could get I mean our biggest thing now is I mean it's not really the money. Um I mean it could be I guess but you know with our schedule and the way we're doing things uh you know we're not overspending and you know we have a budget and we stick to it and all right you know but our biggest thing right now is just getting guys you know uh, come back and helping the shop you know all the behind the scenes stuff. I mean Monday's when they suck, we're washing cars, washing tires, you know, we're spending two or three hours after working outside, you know, Stacy, um, he's my crew chief, been with me since day one, um, Stacy Demoline, and, you know, it's nothing, you know, when it's 90 degrees out on a Monday, we have to work in 10 hours, and then we got to go to the shop and wash the car, and, you know, it's sure. 9 o'clock by the time we get home, and we're just... We're tired, man. You know, and we need some young kids. I mean, to come in and you know help us out a little bit, and you know they're fewer and far between anymore. I mean, what's in it for them? What's their incentive? Um, I Just, mean, it's cool to work on a race car. Yeah, I mean, that's you know when we first did it. I mean, I remember going down to the races, just helping guys out, just to be part of something, yeah. be part of the team. You know, and my son comes. I mean, he's in school now, but um, it was great this summer. Um, my son Chase, he got to. Uh, come to a couple races and i forget it was middle of summer it might have been a birthday race or something like he shows up and he's got like six college kids with him and man we had him breaking tires down we had him <laughs> grinding tires i mean all the stuff that we were just like uh dreading to do and these kids were they were loving it man they were they were every one of them was dirty from head to toe it was great they enjoyed <laughs> you were, it you were talking about your kids being in college um why don't you tell us a little bit about some of your winter uh projects with the boys oh my winners are pretty full i know that <laughs> um i coach wrestling um all during the winter i mean besides building cars and stuff like that i mean i don't know if anybody wants to hear about my wrestling but um you know my son uh he wrestles for university of finley and i coached him um through the biddies and stuff i kind of walked away in junior high and high school but um i really enjoy it um you know it's probably my favorite sport and i know some people are like did you yeah. wrestle in high school? Yeah, I wrestled. I was actually a state placer in high school when I when I was back when we wore uh, leather singlets and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we uh, we enjoy it. our family enjoys it. So we we chase it around all winter long. And um, like my boy being in college, we were in Wisconsin last year watching them in a up in Michigan a couple times. So well, I mean, and uh, my daughter's at BG. You know, she's uh, she just. She's a girl, so. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I can relate. Yeah, it's uh, dad doesn't. I mean, I can relate to, but I mom does girl things with her, and I do boy things with the boy. So, and yeah. has he uh, had any shown any interest in in following in dad's footsteps and running uh you doing know, some racing himself? I'll be honest with you, I purposely kept him out of it, like. um when he was little, he would come a couple times. He was actually um, at the race that I won uh, a couple weeks ago, and that's second or third race he's been to in the last couple years. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of kept him out of it. And, um, you know, he was always into sports growing up. So when I was out racing, he had a soccer game. You know, when I was out racing, he was doing, you know, playing football or something. So, um, you know, I, I tried not to miss and not to miss any of that as any of my kids when my kids were growing up but um you know when you race you race but uh yeah he uh i mean he has fun he enjoys coming to the races but i there's no way that that we could support a you know a billy moyer jr you know what i mean and and, uh it was you know i'd rather have him in school than what about um, when he's done with school and maybe you're you're too tired to work on the car anymore put him in your car well, yeah, that could be. I mean, okay. I could do that. Yeah. I Would mean, he be interested in that, though? I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. My daughter would probably be a better racer, to be honest with you. She, <laughs> she's mean as nails, man. She takes after her mom. My boy's kind of passive. I mean, he's a wrestler and stuff, but he's he's more laid back. Yeah, no aggression there. Yeah. Huh? 
<laughs> I still think his sister can beat him, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He'll never admit to it. You should get them in uh, in some go karts. Oh yeah, I get. I had them. Um, remember when they used to do the quarter midgets in Toledo at the rec center? At the where they had like. Um, I'll bring your bring your kid day, and then right. somebody Absolutely. puts you in a, a quarter sure. midget. Sure, they still I, do that. Yeah, I actually took my boy to uh, one of them one year, and man, he loved it. He but uh, um, it just he loved it for five minutes, and then he went and played soccer somewhere or football, you know. So <laughs> headed out into the field. And yeah, he he you <laughs> kicked know, a ball around. One of these days, I'm going to get him there on a Sunday and just uh, see what he's got. Let the old man show him a little bit. Yeah, well, anybody can do it. I mean, how hard can it be, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I was watching Ryan Missler's video this week, and I seen his car owner. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny. I took uh, I took my crew out a couple years ago, and I actually pulled the seat out of my car, and I put a big boy seat in it. So, and we had like, so Roger actually drove Roger Markey, right? And Roger's in his seventies now. And uh, Careful. We, were, we were stuffing Careful. tire donuts in between the seat and stuff, and he went out and ran it, and a couple of my crew guys ran it, and um, it was quite hysterical. I mean, the one guy got in it and did a lap, and I was like, he goes, oh, that was really cool. And I go, dude, you're horrible. I go, you are you were doing like 10 mile an hour. <laughs> he goes, it's fast enough for me, man. <laughs> I've let a few bomber guys drive my car. Yeah. They're, oh, you, they can't see you, Scott. I know, I know. Yeah, wait, Scott's wait, wait. We'll, we'll wait for it to go back to uh, to well, the group like, shot. That's 30 seconds behind. But Yeah. Yeah, that was a little, That was well, that was before I had even driven. And I guess I think I, no, I drove a couple times in like the, the charity races, but. Yeah. I, I, I thought that might accelerate the learning curve. Did it? And you did fine. Oh, I didn't put it in the wall. Thank you. <laughs> well, the, the best thing about letting my guys uh, drive the car was, that next Saturday when they were yelling at me to go faster or, or go the high line, I'm like, yeah, you see how easy it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was really easy. You like you, you did it on Sunday, right? And uh, so I could kind of give them a little hard time there. They, they were, get a, they they get a point so of reference then. Yeah, exactly. Because they think it's easy. They go, all you do is go around a circle. I'm like, okay, you try it. So with, the, with your wrestling background, have you ever gotten into any feuds with any other drivers any time in your career? <laughs> No, um, <laughs> that, that no, you're no. willing to talk about. Well, I think you, I think you got Ryan on the same question. Um, you know, I kind of drive guys like they drive me. I mean, there's a few times where, you know, I've had to go down and, you know, tell guys, hey, it, it really felt good there for about ten seconds till all four of my tires were ripping the lettering off your door. But, um, you know, I, I, I try to be fair with guys, but you know, some guys get overly aggressive and. I'm. Uh, I kind of make it a point to let them know that you know if you want to use all eight tires, we we'll, we can use all eight tires. I'm all in. If you you know if, if but uh, do unto others as they do. Yeah, do you. I I don't know. I'm trying to sugarcoat this a little bit. <laughs> but, um, Has there been any uh, extracurricular activities? Some fisticuffs. Um, I don't know if I need to comment on that either. <laughs> okay. Well, put it this way. Um, guys drive me pretty clean. I mean, and, and if you drive me clean, I'll drive you clean. And, but if you drive me dirty, you're, I'm, I'm an eye for an eye, you know, that's the way I look at it. Um, you have a gas pedal, you have a brake pedal, just like I do. Um, and if, uh, you uh, get into my left rear and you're still on the gas all the way to the flag stand, we're going to have issues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's go back a couple weeks ago to that uh, American Late Model Series race that you won. You started, uh, I know you were on the front row. Were, were you on the pole or were I you I started outside? on the pole there. I won okay, my heat, a... drew one for the feature. and Did you have a really good feeling about the feature or did you just... I. Well, let me start. Did from, you know how good you were going to be? I'll just start from the beginning, Ron. And this is, I got a guy that keeps, he check, he, he goes down to the bleachers in the pits and he checks our times. And he, you know, Rusty's always fast. Casey's always fast. Ryan's fast. Devin's fast. You know, and he, he had a. Wait, wait, before we go too far into this, uh, Rusty says, uh, Jeep at Gas City, please explain. 
Jeep at Gas City. Um, Oops. That was a few years ago, like <laughs> 15 maybe. But um, I actually uh, I got um, grounded after that one. Um, what happened? And we were going in the corner and Jeep. Van Warmer, I'm assuming. Van Warmer ran me over. He ran over my hood. He ran <laughs> over me so hard. So my car would only turn right because when he hit me, he bent my left front all the way up into my radiator. That's not the so, right way to turn. <laughs> no. So I had to turn right, and um, I kept turning right, kept turning right. And then when Jeep came back around, my foot slipped off the brake, and uh, his right rear looked like my left front. And uh, Yeah, I, had, I, got, I got sent home that night, and uh, a few nights after that, I actually have a letter from Earl Baltus, signed by Earl Baltus, because he used to run the um, Snoko American Late Model Series. And Earl, um, basically, I, I wish I still have it. It's framed in my office in my shop, and it says, uh, we're going to give you a couple weeks off, Dusty, so uh, cooler heads will prevail. So I thought that was kind of neat. That's nice. You yeah. still have this letter? Oh, yeah, I have it. Signed by Earl. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Hand signed by Earl. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's not really cool because I did some bonehead, but um, thanks, Rusty, for bringing that up. <laughs> oh, well, as long as we're talking about Rusty, Rusty, let's talk about I-96. Oh, yeah, the last year. I yeah, remember. yeah. There's video of that. That's, yeah, there is. Yeah. Real evidence. <laughs> there were, video cameras weren't even invented when I did that to Jeep, Rusty. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but anyway. Somebody's got it. Anyways, back to, uh, back to the American So, Wilson. um... My guy, he came in, and I was like, so how did we do? And he goes, you just turned the fastest lap you've ever turned at O'Shade. And I'm like, what? And he's like, I had you on the clock, man. You were honking. And uh, so we went on our heat race, and uh, I had Devin right behind me, and I'm like, I, I was every lap, I'm like, when's Devin going to pass me? When's Devin going to pass me? Because it's always my luck. I start up front, and, you know, I'll go to the bottom, and the guys will roll me on the top. I go to the top, they roll me on the bottom. And, um. Devin never passed me. I won my heat, and uh, I came in, and they, the guys looked at me, and they're like, that car's fast, dude. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Because the week before, I struggled. Like, I, I, I really did. And I had a couple good top five finishes two weeks previous to that. So yeah. I, I changed something the week before, and it went. I went totally backwards. Like, I was, I've was, i been working on a car a lot with Rusty and the guys and um, just trying to dial it in to fit me. Uh, the way I drive, and yeah, so two weeks ago I was horrible. Then that week, uh, you know, we come feature, we drew the one. My guy comes back, uh, Phil uh, Malash, he came back, and he's the guy, same guy we're on the stopwatch, and he said, uh, man, you're not going to like this. And I was like, what? And he goes, I drew you one. I'm like, oh, <laughs> God. Because you're, sometimes you're a sitting duck when you draw the one, especially at Oak Shade. Because Leading a race is hard, Dusty. It's, it yeah. really is. I mean, you, you just don't know. And I've got, I mean, I've always, I always thought third was kind of the best spot to be in sometimes because you can see everything in front of you. And, and there's been times where I've been in third till three laps ago and just, you know, the top line comes in, I roll a guy and he never sees me coming. And, and that's basically the race. I was looking over my shoulder for probably through the middle of the race. I seen Casey a couple of times and then I just, I never look back. I just look straight ahead and um stood on the gas i didn't know what was going on behind me at all there was a lot of exciting racing going on right I, well yeah. i watched the video like a week <laughs> later and i'm like holy like missler was like all over me casey was all over me ever i mean it was and Very casey actually racing, passed too. me a couple times and i got him I, you know i rolled him back on the top and you know ryan was there i mean if any of us would have even made one little itty bitty one mistake, little sneeze one sneeze it would have been all over but I mean, the car was great. Um, hopefully, it'll be great this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and there, well, there was a, we had a lot of uh, lap traffic to deal with, too, well, especially yeah, at the end. Because in the middle of the race, we actually caught lap traffic. We are into lap traffic, and they are running side-by-side, side, probably a row and a half deep, and uh, we were stopped. I mean, we probably lost three-quarters of a second a lap just figuring out what we were going to do, and then the caution came out. And uh, I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would, I want to say probably lap 23. Or, oh, no, I'm sorry, it was three laps. So it was probably lap 27. Um, 
I split two lappers, and I knew, like, I just had a feeling if I didn't get around them when I had the chance, I was going to get stuck because they were side by side, and it just happened. One guy was on the bottom, one guy was on the top, and they left me, I don't even half know. Half a car with. Yeah, half a car, <laughs> and I, I drove it in there, and, I mean, I stopped. Um, You know, I, I got to give props to the, the guy because I stuffed him. I mean, I, I, I stopped him when I drove it in there, but I knew if I didn't clear him on that lap, it was over. And then uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan was. I had a buffer between me and Ryan, so Ryan for a second, <laughs> I won. So I did my job. Did Did Ryan come and congratulate you? I, you know what? I think he did actually. I think he did. He came down and congratulated me. Told me it was a great race, and I was like, um, I, I was leading. I didn't see what you were doing. But <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, People yeah. don't realize there's not mirrors in those cars. Yeah, there, and if they're. I think I said something to somebody. I was like, dude, if there was mirrors in them cars, I would have hit the wall. Because I wouldn't even, I would have not even been looking in front this of me. This is a great race to watch. Yeah, I was like, this is great. Right. That's but, probably why there isn't mirrors. Yeah, it, I, I mean, they had me covered up. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. Um, if I would have been in third, I might have been back there with Ryan. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I had the car to roll him on the outside or not. But it, uh, it was, I mean, I think the fans really liked it. Yeah. I liked it. You know, to the fans fan. that, that really don't know, we don't have mirrors. We don't have radios. You have a radio just from the tower, and that's only to tell you there's a caution or something. Right, right. It's not, and, mm, and, not uh, like a spotter. And the seats that we're required to run now uh, make side-to-side vision a little difficult. So yeah. it's hearing. You, you yeah. hear. You use a lot well, of And then you've got hearing. earbuds in your ear so yeah. that the tower can yell at you. But you can still kind of hear if there's a car right there. I mean, yeah. if for you to hear a car, he's got to be to your number. Yeah. yeah. Like, his nose needs to be your number. If he's... Because you see a lot of guys, uh, like, if guys will be... If they get into your left rear, you can't see him. You know, if you change lanes and you, you chop a guy, you honestly can't see him until he gets to your door number. So it may look intentional from the stands, but you don't yeah. see him. Oh, no, you there. can't see nothing. So. Yeah, absolutely. So you're racing uh, this weekend is uh, at, at Oakshade, the season championship night. Is this your last uh, weekend for the year then? Um, we were talking about doing the. I think there's a topless race here in a couple weeks. Yep. Um, we were talking about doing the topless race. Um, we. That's where the roof's cut off. He's not going to be out there without a shirt on. Yeah. We I know there's gonna, people are paying a lot of, to see that. Basically, you're going to look at the, the sail panels will be gone, the roof will be gone, and it'll just be a deck and... You can actually see in the car and see what the. I mean, you can see the driver sawing on the wheel. You can see his head. Face, I mean, yeah, it's a, and it changes the aerodynamics of our it car does. a bunch, a bunch. Tightens the cars up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hmm. So, a- any plans uh, other than that, is that that you're done for the season? Then you know, that. Um, I'm a firm believer in not pushing your luck, and I think the later it gets in the season, um, guys think they got all winter to fix their cars and. You know, I'm not that guy, man. I don't want to spend money on a, a bunch of parts and, uh, you know, because some guy was out there and he's going to sell that car to somebody else. And, I mean, I got good equipment and it costs a lot of money and I don't want to tear it up. So if I can roll that thing in the trailer with all four weir- wheels with air in them and point it the, kind the, of the, right, in the direction. right direction, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put it on jack stands and work on it all winter. Rusty says uh, he was your biggest fan from the fourth position there in that race he was actually my i'll be honest with you i all i could think of for probably the first 10 laps is i wonder when rusty's gonna pass me i wonder when <laughs> rusty's gonna pass me because rusty is i mean if anybody knows rusty rusty he he's he's got oak shade figured out he's probably one of the best drivers out there when it comes to oak shade and uh, yeah, i was kind of surprised to, not to see him up there mixing it up with, yeah, with you and ryan and the, the casey the best part about it was I was in Rusty's trailer before we ran a lap, uh, and I changed some. I changed the spring. I changed the spring and uh, made some chassis adjustments. And Rusty looked at me and he goes, "He goes, this should help a lot." And I was like, "All right." And uh, he goes, "It's exactly what I have on my car." So for me, that's kind of like the the boss or the employee beating the boss, you know? Nice. So I, I, I just knew that he was coming around me on the outside and I was in my car was so good. He's, he, he told me after races, he said, uh, he goes, I didn't have nothing for you. And I'm like, Phew. but I'm sure after last or a couple Saturdays ago that, uh, he's not going to be so free with the information anymore. <laughs> so, uh, 
Um, we'll see. We'll see how this weekend goes. He might have figured something out, and he's not going to tell me for a long time. <laughs> Any uh, changes to the setup uh, this weekend, or are you keeping that's, things the same? Uh, that's I can't tell you that. Well, I'm not racing against you. Man. Ron is. Who, who are we going to tell? <laughs> who are we going to tell? Um, <laughs> we tweak on the car every week. I mean, okay. in... Like I said, I had you're not going to take any big swings at it. No, though. no, 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 no. I, 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 we had a couple top fives the previous weeks, and then we went really, really bad um, the week before the LMS race, and I finished. Ten, I started tenth, finished tenth, and uh, we uh, dialed well, it back into back. close to where we were, and then uh, it's running, it's running too good to mess with it too much. You know, I mean, it's I really like it. It's to my driving style, so we'll see. Looking forward to uh, seeing you this weekend. Dusty Moore, thanks uh, for coming in tonight. Thank you for uh, having me. A couple more things to get to. And, again, we're having issues with our camera system. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or Twitter, uh, I am no longer invisible. Dusty is invisible. I am now a blur or something, some ghostly apparition kind of thing. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but, anyways, uh, last week we played how many. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with how many, but you get to play how many this week. I'm not familiar. What's the rules? Well, you're going to be. Oh. Last week, uh, we were uh, guessing how many late models were going to be at Eldora on Saturday night for the World 100. The uh, number I came up with was 86. And uh, the person that guessed 86 was me. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> right on the button. So, and online, our, uh, our online winner, because uh, we have people uh, mm -hmm. on our Facebook Live that play along with us, they can leave uh, their guess in the comments. Karina Belcher, guest eighty. She was uh, closest there. I don't oh, know right. if I don't know if uh, if uh, Dean's doing the the free pizza anymore. Or if that was just a one time deal, but I'll, I'll let them figure it out in the the comments there on on Facebook. But if you want to play along this week, at the very least, you get uh, mentioned on the show. So congratulations, uh, Karina Belcher. This week we're going to do how many uh, late models will be at Oak Shade on uh, Saturday? I already know of one, two. So yeah, there's going to yeah. be at least two there. Three, because that other one out of my shop, it'll be there. Oh. Okay, so uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with our guest uh, Dusty. How many late miles do you think are going to be at Oakshade? Saturday night, Oakshade um, season championship. Night. Season championship night. I would say I want to say thirty-two. Okay, I forgot my pen, so I'm using a highlighter. I see. Uh, Kathy, what do you got? You can't use 32. Can't he already pick, has I already 32. picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 31. Okay. <laughs> it's like the price is right. Yeah, 29. 29. Oh, hell, I'll go with 30. Though. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> fill in the gap. So if you want to guess, uh, go ahead and do that online now. And if you, somebody else guesses the same number, whoever put that number first on, online in the comments, they went in. It looks like uh, Dean said, yep. So I think that means you, you might get a free pizza from Big D's Pizza if uh, you're an, the online winner. I still if you drive down to see Dean. Yeah. Free where's that? Uh is it in Fremont? Is that yeah. where Big D's is? I've never tried that. You have to try Big D's. I'll have to have Dean on the show just so we can have pizza. Maybe yeah. when we're at the Dirty Thirty, can we Dean maybe he'll bring some pizza out to us at some Oh, wouldn't Speedway. that be cool? That would be. Maybe there's uh do they serve pizza at Sandusky Speedway? I don't know. Maybe they could set up a deal there for that. I don't know. Uh, racing uh, coming up this weekend. I only have uh, two events in our uh, immediate area. Oakshade Raceway, of course, as we mentioned. Season Championship Night with the uh, Late Model Sportsman Bombers and Compacts. Gates Open for Racing at 7. Uh, general Mission for Adults, 14 bucks. Also, Saturday night, Fremont Speedway. It's Fremont Federal Credit Union Season Championship Night for the 410 Sprints, 305 Sprints, and the Dirt Trucks. Gates and Racing, same time. Gates Open for Racing at 7. General Mission, 15 bucks. At Fremont Speedway, those are the only two. Uh, we talked about Butler a little earlier on. Um, are they done now? I don't know. I don't think so. I think there's. Uh, they have. Uh, Maybe somebody can let us know. They have a bigger race. I know. Uh, I thought they had another bigger race coming up right. here. Schedule of events: Butler Motor Speed. Oh, that says December 2018. Oh no, I'm in the right year. We're in the right year. They got, uh, yeah, the uh, the Butler Battlegrounds two-day open show coming up, uh, not this weekend, next weekend, and then uh, this weekend looks like uh, Mod Street Stocks and Front Wheel Drives. Just regular there. show? Okay. Yeah, $13 general admission there. So, and that looks like the last two events, this uh, this weekend and next weekend, last two for Butler. 
uh, getting down to the end of the season. Next week, uh, Toledo Speedway, uh, Glass City 200. Big deal for them. Yeah, so uh, getting down there. Uh, let's check out uh, Ryan Weekman with that uh, weekend weather uh, pit stop forecast. So if you know what to wear or if to go or not to go, and you should because the weather is going to be pretty dang good. Oh, come on. That's a spoiler. What? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. This is your weekend weather pit stop forecast. I'm First Alert meteorologist Ryan Weekman. A little light on the schedule here, but we'll get through it here. Uh, looks gorgeous. Saturday, we've got Oak Shade. We've got Fremont. Really nice weather. Humidity should take a dip from where it's been most of this week. Highs will be right near 80 degrees. Dry weather. And just to round out your weekend plans for Sunday, too. I know no races out there, but should be gorgeous. Highs right in the mid-80s. This has been your weekend weather pit stop forecast. Be sure to download the free First Alert weather app. I'm First Alert meteorologist Ryan Weekman. He's a meteorologist. Yes, he is. He's more meteor than you will ever be. So that's going to do it for uh, this edition of the uh, Hammer Down Racer Park. Show number 100 with the uh, freaky ghost cameras tonight. Uh, if, again, watching us, uh, the video. I, I don't know. We had some issues with the uh, camera system earlier tonight, and the uh, engineers were in here working on it. They fixed uh, the problem with the uh, video playing endlessly at the beginning of the show, but uh, now I look like a smeared blob, and uh, Dusty's still invisible when he, he talks. Well, and, and you're a, sta Nobody wants a stationary stationary blob Smeared too blob. yeah uh, again the dirty 30 uh coming up sandusky speedway october 12th ump late models uh fremont trucks oak shade bombers and front wheel drives um front wheel drives are both uh, the asphalt and dirt cars but everything else all dirt cars running on the asphalt at sandusky gates open at three hot laps at four autograph session at five and racing will start at six o'clock and we're going to try and do a show out there uh, as well, Dean Henry says he can do the pizza for the Dirty Thirty. So we want the all right. We'll the we we need to get out. Dean and Chris together so that uh, maybe he could be the official pizza supplier for for Sandusky, Sandusky <laughs> Speedway. <laughs> oh no! Um, so again, please uh, visit HammerdownRacingReport dot com. Click on the uh, the link there. We have to uh, all the information for the Dirty Thirty is on there. Rules, payouts, times, admission. Everything you need how, to know how to get a hold of anybody yeah. that you might want to, and, and there is a form there at, if you want to have if you're a driver and you uh, have any inkling on in coming out and competing. Uh, there's a link there to the form uh, where we'll add you to the list if you no fill cost. It out. Yeah, it doesn't obligate you. It doesn't cost you to fill it out. It'll take you just a couple seconds. To your name, hometown, and class you're going to be running in. Chris Mize would feel uh, much better if uh, he saw some some more names on there. So. Uh, Get on that. Let's, yeah, let's make Chris feel good. Hopefully we'll have a, a lot more names to add next week. Tried talking Dusty into do it. but uh, you, you know, if somebody's got a car they want me to drive, uh, reach out to me. I'll drive for them. That's you're, for sure. you're in for that, huh? I'm in for that. And um, we need I to... don't think my car owner is going to let me. Oh. Yeah, that car I got now is going in the box for the rest of the year. <laughs> and uh, as Ron mentioned earlier, he said there's probably going to be about 17 uh, Fremont dirt trucks that are going to be there. So we need to get the, some more. Uh, participation from the Oak Shade Bombers right. coming on out. We got a few of them already. We, Kurt uh, Dickey and uh, we, we had talked. We need some flyers that uh, can we we can pass out. That's in right. The pits we're supposed and, to update the flyers. Are you yep. listening, Chris Mize? We need the updated flyers so we can get those uh, printed out. So there you go. Next week on the show, we're going to talk to Ryan Sheets of uh, Fremont Speedway uh, about the uh, big Jim and Joanne Ford Classic coming up. That's next weekend as well. He'll be in the studio? He'll be in the studio. All right. Dave Kemmer set that up. Thanks, uh, Associate Producer Dave Kemmer, for that. Uh, 7 o'clock next Thursday night, show number 101. Ooh. Is that Chester Fitch's number? Yes, it is. We should add Chester Fitch on show number 101. Well, what he, were we thinking? We could probably bring him over. Oh, okay. Chester Fitch, if you want to be here <laughs> next week, come on in. Uh, yeah, from, show number 101. From, from here on out, if uh, your show number matches, uh, if our show number matches your car number, then uh, feel free to come. Just stop on by. What the yeah. hell? Um, don't forget to uh, give Ron Miller Race Cars a call, 734-856-7223. And uh, if you are interested in being a sponsor of the Hammer Down Race Report, you can email me, scotthammer at iheartmedia.com. Or, again, stop by hammerdownracingreport.com. We have uh, all kinds of sponsorship information on that website. Thanks again, Dusty Moore, for uh, coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you for Ma having me. Making the 
40-minute drive, even though you were la- lollygagging out there. You weren't uh, starting from the pole getting here. Oh, no, no I, was, I was the pace truck. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty, congratulations again, man. That was a great-looking win. Thank you very much, Ron. Thanks for having me on tonight, guys. We'll see you Saturday out, out at Oakshade. Absolutely. All right. We out. I think we're gone. Let's go home. Go get something to eat. It's dinner time, Scott. See you next week. Hammer Down Race Report. Goodbye. You have been listening to the Hammer Down Racing Report from the Ron Miller Race Car Studio. Listen on demand on iHeartRadio.